today's topic, what makes muscles grow, right? That is an interesting topic. Why would you care on, let's say, a chemical, biological level, what makes muscles grow? The reason is that the more you know, the better you will be and the better results you'll be getting, okay? So the topic and the purpose of my channel is really to create educated gym rats, so to speak, yeah. then yeah. the better you are in terms of knowledge, the better gains you will get, if that makes sense. So when it comes to muscle growth, that's really something people need to understand. <clears throat> And here's why. In the old days, people would just join a gym, hey John, and do the workout that Mr. Olympia does or whatever, right? But that is total nonsense. Because imagine this, would you ever go to the pool and do Michael Phelps' workout? Absolutely not you would drown, pass out, puke, whatever, right? So you need to be able to make a workout that works for you. Now, in order to do that, you need to understand how things work, okay? So that's what we're trying to do today. So for muscle growth, there's really three things that really matter, okay? So the first one is metabolic damage which is essentially fiber tearing, okay? So when you lift something that's heavy enough or you lift enough intensity, you tear some fibers. Okay, so let me rephrase this. There are three things that matter when it comes to muscle growth. Hey, muscle mania, thanks for joining. There is metabolic damage. Metabolic damage occurs in the fibers, if you're lifting something that's heavy enough, with enough intensity, then God willing, you have the right nutrition and all that stuff, your body will make the fibers bigger, stronger, faster. Okay? So that's one. Number two is metabolic stress. Metabolic stress is the buildup of lactate, hydrogen ions, and free radicals in the muscle. So those things build up, and when your cardiovascular system cannot push them out fast enough, you get what's called the burn, right? Everybody knows, has, a pre has found that, right? And your set's over. You can't lift any more weight, okay? That's metabolic stress. The last one is metabolic tension. Metabolic tension is basically the lengthening and shortening of a muscle. Short, long, short, long. All right, Mike, that's great. What does this mean for my workout? Well, in order to grow, you have to cover all bases. So metabolic damage you create by overload, right? So in order to create more damage, you must lift more weight or do more reps or more sets than you did last month. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. So that's where periodization comes in. Periodization means you structure the month into four weeks where you gradually increase the weight until you're maxed out and then you're coming back down, you start a new cycle. That also means you have to train with more volume and more frequency. So that's that. Metabolic stress is being increased by time under tension, okay? That means no jerky reps. Jerky reps are A, dangerous, and B, they're not doing anything for you, okay? Yeah, you're lifting the weight. So like someone who's curling like this, it does nothing, okay? There's no stress on the muscle, it's all in the joints. For mechanical tension, you need proper form. Okay? It's kind of a no-brainer. But the better your form, the more tension is on the muscle. So I'm going to give an example. You've all seen the guy in the gym 
takes a 50 pound barbell or whatever and curls like this, right? You've all seen that guy. Okay, here's the thing. This guy is getting maybe, maybe 20 pounds on his bicep, but 100 pounds on his elbow. So that means this guy is gonna have an injury, but certainly not bigger biceps, okay? So don't be that guy. So now the question is, how do I put this all together and how do I make my own workout, Mike? Like, how does this work? So when creating your own workout, the first thing you look at is time. How much time do you have to train? Do you have six hours a week? Do you have two hours a week? You gotta train the whole body at least twice a week. So if you only have two hours, well, take a wild guess. You're gonna do two full body workouts, right? If you have more time, you can do an upper-lower split or push-pull legs, right? So that's the first thing you have to consider. How much time can I realistically dedicate to my workout? Number two is your goals. So if you want your legs to get bigger, well, I recommend that for a month, you train your legs two or three times a week. And then you shift to back or chest or whatever you have you, right? There's no training for mass or fat loss. That's purely diet. So next time somebody sells you a fat loss program, that's bullshit, okay? When training for fat loss, the job of training is to keep the muscle on. It's the same training as for mass, okay? All this high reps burn fat, that's all crap. Don't fall for that. Then, how many sets should you do? About 12 sets per body part times two per week. So let's say you do chest on Monday and on Thursday, you do 12 and 12, okay? Then the next question is always rep speed. Should I lift fast or slow? What's the story? If you lift fast, it builds a little bit more muscle. The problem is you can't lift a lot of weight when doing fast. So the cancer is a wash. So you have to slow down the negative, okay? The reason being is A, it keeps you out of injury, and B, it keeps time and attention high. Every time you jerk around and you move the weight spastically, you're breaking time on attention. The magic number seems to be 40 seconds. So if you're doing this, you always go one second and back to zero, one second back to zero, okay? You're never gonna get over the mark where you're actually building muscle. So control the reps, that's important. How many reps should you do? Personally, I think that most people should never go below five reps. It's too dangerous, it's too much ego lifting. Um, there's not much to it. Six reps for faster muscles and hamstrings, for complex movements, you know, deadlift, clean and presses, something like that. Otherwise, eight to 12 is a good number. Calves can be higher because they're endurance muscle. So calves, you can be looking at like up to 20, 30 reps, some of that sort. Should you train to failure? Good question. Train to failure is very effective. It builds a lot of muscle. It's also tiring on the central nervous system. So that loops back to periodization. I would have only one week or so in the month where I train to failure. The other weeks, I keep it like two or three reps below. If you train to failure all the time, you burn out, okay? Mentally, it's just too much. Next question is, should you train heavy? Um, there's a study, two groups did the similar program. One was like a classic bodybuilding sort of split, you know, the other one was more six to eight reps, heavy weights, longer rest, and that group build more muscle. All right, case closed, right? Should lift heavy. It's not that easy. The group that lifted heavy had a lot of dropouts, joint problems, burnouts. They were also in the gym for about 70 minutes of workout. The group that did the bodybuilding routine was in the gym about 26 minutes. So if they had trained maybe 40 minutes, they could have gotten a lot more gains than if you lifted heavy. 
So again, lifting heavy is fine, but dose it, okay? Once a month, not more often. Now, do you know what's the most important thing in bodybuilding? Aside from diet, and I don't say steroids. You know what really matters the most? It's muscle activation. Most people go to the gym, okay, and they lift weights. But they're just moving the weights from A to B. That is not going to do it. If you want to build a physique, you have to actually properly activate the muscle. That requires a little bit of knowledge about anatomy, but it's worth it. You know what one of the first things was that Arnold did when he came to the United States? He took anatomy classes. And it worked fine for him. So, for instance, you're training your chest, right? The pecs do this, meaning every press you do should be an inward intention, okay? If you're just pressing the bar straight up, you're training your triceps. Your back, most people do it like a heavy bicep curl. It has to come from the shoulder blades first and then pull down. Uh, when you're training delts, don't shrug up. Leave the traps down and lead from the elbows. Uh, biceps, never, never swing the shoulders. Keep the shoulders back, keep the biceps tucked in, and curl up slowly. What do I have to have? Triceps, slight tuck, and then extend. Quadriceps, whenever you're squatting or doing a leg press, push from the heel. If you're pushing from your toes, you're not working your quads. Okay? So, to summarize, mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and metabolic damage. To achieve those, you have to train gradually heavier or add volume. You have to train in good form. Good form is important, A, for results, and B, not to get injured. If you're injured, you can't train. And lastly, you have to dose the extreme techniques, such as training to failure. Like, I'm not a fan, for instance, of half reps, assisted reps. The, the injury potential is way too high, and the, the, the added gains are tiny, 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 tiny. But you overwork your central nervous system so much for an extra half rep is really not worth it. And lastly, you have to understand that you're not a weightlifter, you're a bodybuilder. So the numbers, like what you can lift, nobody cares. Nobody, okay? You have to find out which exercise work for you and do them in perfect form. So who cares if some guy lifts more than you? Like people always ask me when I lift, like as, who cares? I'm 230 and you're not, right? So that's really what it boils down to. And with that, we're concluding the week. Hope everybody learned something. And we'll be back by Monday. Uh, thanks again for Muscle Mania for giving us exposure here. It's much appreciated.